Hello everybody, this is Christine coming to you live from the Cards by Christine studio here in Fond du Lac, Wisconsin. And this is my fourth live in a row, yay! I'm so happy to be with you again. It helps me feel connected to all of you. And I'm super excited to be with you tonight. Tonight's Facebook Live is gonna feature some cards that I actually had for a class earlier in this month. Luckily, it was a class that I had right before things got really dicey with the coronavirus and I had everybody um, attend except for three people. And so I'm primarily featuring this live for those cards so those gals know how to put these cards together. But in addition to the four cards, I'm going to be making a gift bag with Soledad and Isabella in mind so that they can pull out some paper and make a gift bag, hopefully. So, um, but I wanna thank everybody for tuning in last night and the night before. I have sent out three cards to people who requested cards be sent to them. I did a paper pumpkin party live two nights ago and made the 12 cards from the paper pumpkin. And also I put an offering out for yesterday's live that whoever likes, share, comments, I would do a drawing. And I was right on that and I saw that Karen Wetstein had shared. And so she was the lucky winner of some cards. These are the cards that I'll be sending out to Karen, one of each of the paper pumpkin cards. So she's going to be receiving these just as they are, and she'll be able to take and write any notes in here and send them out and spread love to whoever she wants to. So congratulations, Karen. I'll get these out to you tomorrow. And I still have all these left girls and boys. I want to send some love out to people. So if you wanna send me the name and address of somebody who you think could be a, could use a little pick-me-up, I would, would love to do that. So. Um, so make sure you uh, let me know who you'd like to spread an address or name of some people that you'd like some love spread to. And for right now, for this live, I'm going to flip right back to this. So this is the Little Ladybug set. This is available during celebration for those who host a workshop with $300 or more. And I would love to thank Diane Bogenhagen. She is donating her little ladybug set here to a lucky winner. And that winner will be somebody, it'll be drawn out of who comments or likes or shares this Facebook Live for the Painted Poppies class. She did this class and she loved it. She did it with her friend, Chris. And so she wanted to, to she's like, hey, I have an extra ladybug set. You wanna do a drawing? I'm like, yeah, of course. So, um, so that's the ladybug set. So make sure that you like, share, and comment uh, the, for this Facebook Live. I absolutely love it. I need all the support and love I can get too. <laughs> it gets kind of lonely sitting here working all day. So, all right. So that's a little bit about the like, share, and comment. And what I wanna do is get right into the card making. So the product-based class that I did, it was um, earlier this month, and everybody actually made eight cards. And these were the four designs. What happened was, because it's a product-based class, I do a couple of those with every catalog, one or two, with every catalog. It's a product-based class because you pay a set amount, and this class was $35, and it included a pack of the designer series paper. And I'll bring in my little paper pack here. So the paper is awesome. It's so, so, so pretty. So it's this piece right here that with flowers more flowers it's all poppies all the way so and then the reverse of this is more of your new like solid color so there's a big green piece with the stripes polka dots the poppy red some green stripes and the like abstract poppy flowers so everybody got a pack of paper and everybody got a pack of sequins and they got their own spool of the seam binding ribbon. So right there alone, there was like $25 worth of product. And then on top of it, you everybody who came got to make eight cards. So two of each of the designs. And what happened was I used the paper from your pack to cut for the DSP. And you use your ribbon and your sequence in the class. And I threw in the extra cardstock that was needed to complete the cards. So what I wanna do tonight is go through making these beautiful cards. So 
I, if you saw this, what I tried to do when I designed these cards is I tried to feature four different colors um, from the suite of products or from the paper. So like here I featured Rich Razzleberry, here I featured Cherry Cobbler, which even, it wasn't even referenced on the paper, but this actual pattern matched with that so much nicer than anything else. Then this is the pool party. The pool party really went great with the poppies. Oh my gosh, I love this color combination. And then here I pulled in the poppy with the black. So I tried to pull in four different colors. So I am going to start with everybody's favorite card. Where should I set these? I'll set them over here. Everybody's favorite card was this one. They loved the simplicity of it. They loved how pretty it was. I mean, that paper just speaks for itself. The sheet is a 12 by 12 and you get a row of flowers like this and then there's another row of flowers. So the whole sheet is basically like just ready to go. So this is your card base and it's eight and a half by five and a half. This is the rich Razzleberry color. I have it scored at four and a quarter which makes it really easy to fold in half. You wanna pull in your bone folder to burnish your edges. And put that back, okay. I've already got the stuff all stamped and colored. So all I'm really doing today is just putting the cards together. So this is your inside mat. It measures four by five and a quarter. And all you need to do is once you've done your stamping, just go ahead and um, glue that on the inside. So the, you're welcome to stamp however you want. But what I used is the flower from the Painted Poppy set. It's this flower right here. So that's basically all I stamped in there, but you could stamp whatever flower you wanted. And it's just colored in with a rich Razzleberry light blend and a light old olive blend, okay? Or, yeah, that's old olive. So, okay, so that's what I did for that. Okay, then I have a piece of black and the DSP. So when I cut my DSP, I cut it about 3 16 less on the top and the side to give it that, si that size of a mat. All you're gonna do is flip that piece of paper over, put your liquid glue or your tape runner, whatever is your poison for your adhesive. You're just gonna adhere it to the piece of basic black cardstock. I like the liquid glue because it allows me to get it exactly where I want it before it, heat before it sets in. Then you're gonna flip that over and Hey, Jessica, I'm just looking over to see who's, who's in. Oh, hey, Stacy's joined us too, thank you. All right, so I'm just popping up the basic black and I'm gonna put a couple extra dimensionals right in the middle here. So, still using that index finger here <laughs> to pull off my dimensionals. So, the trick with the dimensional is the more you press them down, the easier it is to get that waxy paper off. Okay, so now what you're gonna do is just flip that around and that's just gonna get centered on top of your card base. Okay, then let's see where I have the rest of my pieces here. Mm, oh, oh, here they are. Okay, <laughs> they're hiding on me. So this die cut, you would have gotten this in your kit from me and you may need to take your pokey tool and just poke out some of the extra pieces I don't mind cutting, but I don't need to poke for everybody. <laughs> so that adds on so much time. So you may need just to grab out your pokey tool and get some of those little pieces out of there. Okay, then what you're gonna wanna do is if you have a Stella pen, you can go ahead and Stella this black trim piece. Now, if you're wondering where this black trim piece comes from, that's also part of the Painted Poppies. So this is the die, it's called Painted Labels, and it actually comes along with the Peaceful Moments as a bundle. And I got this die right here is what was used for this. And then for the label, the label was stamped with the words, thank you, from this set. And then it's die cut out with the label from the Painted Labels dies. So that's how where that comes from. So. What I did on here is I stamped the word thank you and then I um, stamped on here with this like wash look. So that is actually also from this stamp set. In here there's two of them, a larger area one and a small one. What I did is I took this stamp 
and I used the pear pizzazz ink and you stamp off one time, two time, and then third strength, uh, three, <laughs> so three, you're gonna actually go on to here. If you do second or first strength, it was really dark and it takes away from the word thank you. So that is that washy look with it at third strength. Then what I'm going to do is I'm gonna take my liquid glue and I'm gonna carefully put a little bit of glue right on the top of this. Oh, look how glittery that is. I don't know if you can see that, but I love my Stella. Okay, then what you're gonna do is take your label and adhere it to the black trim. I guess that's what you call that down there. And I'm trying to center it with that one and that one in mind because I'm going to take my scissors and what I'll do is just trim that off and that off, okay? So what, oh, and it's not dry quite yet. So you wanna give that time to make sure it dries. Otherwise you're gonna get glue everywhere. Okay, that gets snipped off, and then that gets snipped off. Okay, so does that make sense so far? You're just putting that little bit of, I'll go over here, so that little bit of black trim on there with liquid glue. Then all you need to do is grab some more of your dimensionals, and you're gonna pop this one up, and I am gonna use six dimensionals on the back of this, and that will give it lots of stability. Okay, so, after you've got this prepped, that's pretty much it, except for embellishing the card. So let's get this on here. So when I was looking at this, in this case, I'm gonna put my label here, but depending on where your DSP or flowers lie, in some cases, some people's looked better over on the left side, so it just depends where you want to see your label, but I like mine over on this side. Okay, then I've got a few sequins on here and they're kind of hard to see, but for my sequins, what I'm doing is these are the, the little glue dots that you get with the paper pumpkin. They are smaller than what you get on the roll of mini glue dots from the box that you can buy. So what I do is I save my paper pumpkin um, mini glue dots for this kind of work, so with sequins. So once you've got that on here, then all you have to do is take your pokey tool and those little pieces will just pop right up. Now, sequins, you have to be very careful when you're using your sequins. They are super duper staticky. So as I'm opening this, they will wanna jump out and look at my cover, how they're all stuck to the cover like that. So that's really nice for picking out of here, but you can see that it just wants to stick to my finger. So just be very careful when you're opening, oh, look at that. When you're opening and shutting your sequins, some people say that putting a dryer sheet in here and shutting it, it helps. But when you take your, take your pick tool, there's a putty end. And that's what I'm gonna use to pick up that sequin right there. And I'm gonna find myself a clear sequin. So the clear ones are really hard to see, but they add a little bit of like glistening to it. And I'm gonna take a red one and put a red one right down there. Okay, so far so good. Now just be careful when you wanna shut your sequins. I always encourage shutting them when you're not using them so that you don't accidentally bump them and have them go all over the place. All right, lastly on here, I'm gonna pull out my bow maker because sometimes it's good to see this in action. Not always remember how to do it. So what I'm doing is grabbing my seam binding ribbon and I'm putting my nails at the smallest area and I wanna do a double bow. So I'm gonna wrap that around twice. I'll do it again so that you can see I'm just going around like that. And I'm going under, over, under, and then I'm not really making a knot, I'm just doing it one time. And as I tighten it, I pull my ends down. You wanna make sure you use a ribbon scissors with this one because it is very delicate ribbon. So there's that. And then on this one, I will use my regular glue dots for that. So I'll take that and I'm gonna tuck my bow right in the corner here, like so, and find the front of my bow and tuck that in there. And then I like to trim my ribbon tails. It's the very last thing I do on my card is trim my tails. If I trim them before I put the bow down, you have a, or I do have a tendency to, to have them fray on you. So 
And you definitely always recommend doing your bow cutting of your ends last. So, all right, number one done. Wasn't that awesome? I will tell you, like, it's hard to see because of that glare, but this card is just awesome. Like, it really didn't take much to put it together. If you're wondering about my sizes of the paper, I have this black piece measured at five and, th so five and three and three quarters. And the DSP, the designer series paper, was three and nine sixteenths by four and 13 sixteenths. So that's some measurements for you in case you wanna do a card similar to this that you get like that nice thick border around the edges. Okay, everybody doing okay so far? All right, Diane joined, yay. <laughs> I'm sure that Diane came and picked up her order real quick and I was in here working. <laughs> or maybe you didn't pick it up yet, Diane. Um, okay, so that is card number one. Let me scoot that one out of the way. And then we're gonna work on our second card. I think it's gonna be this one. So this one's super cool. It has a fun fold to it. So this opens like that, that opens that way. And then I don't generally glue my insides into my samples. I keep them on the back, but that's what that would open up to. So it's just a long panel card, I guess. So let me tell you what I got going on for this one. Um, I grab it off my pile over here. I have a lot of it already prepped. So what I did on this one is started with two pieces of cherry cobbler. Both pieces started off at four and a quarter by 11, scored at five and a half, which is the center. So I had two pieces just like that. Once I had them ready, I had made my, when I originally designed this card, I made a template. So this template is just a piece of postcard and I cut where I like, I did, this is where I did my measuring was I, it's really hard to see, but I got pencil marks here. So I measured up a certain distance here to here. And then I found the center point and just cut. So then what we did for class is we just held this up. So it would have been like on this, we would have put this just to the score line like so. And then all you're gonna do is take your scissors and you're just gonna cut like that and that. So the people that got the kits for me though, I already did your cutting for you. So you didn't have to worry about that. But that's all I did was I made this template for that. Okay, so now that you have that cut, the next step was to take the layering ovals. Let's see here, it's hard to see this. But take the layering ovals and you're gonna cut yourself out. And I did this for the kits, but what you would do is cut out your layering oval and you cut it out of this cherry cobbler piece. And at the same time that you got it, you're gonna cut out a black one or whatever color you want for the card that you're making. Cause see here, so you've got your outline and you've got the black. Then there's also a piece here that is the, the oval part that's a stitched oval from the stitch shapes set. So everybody got that and you can stamp on it what you want. Um, I have on here happy birthday, which comes from Peaceful Moments, which is right there. And then I also use that same flower from Painted Poppies on here. So let me show you how to put this card together. So first things first, let's fold our bases in half here and burnish our edges. Okay, like that and like that. Make sure they're straight and Burnish like that, okay. So what you wanna ask yourself when you're putting this card together is do you want your card to open like this or do you want your card to open like, like that? So in this case, I made my card open this way. So I will do this one the opposite way. So what you're gonna do is you're gonna put a little bit of liquid glue on this back panel and that's where this panel will go right over the top of it. So just make sure you're straight and then make sure you're able to shut it before it really like soaks into the paper and it's glued really tight. Okay, so that's glued together. Now I've already got my mat done. So it's four by five and a quarter and to color in the flower, what I used was a light cherry cobbler blend and then I also used um, light old olive for the greenery. So
So what you need to do on here is just take, hey Karen, thanks for joining tonight. What you're just gonna do is take your liquid glue and adhere your inside mat into your card like so. All right, looking good. Now we have two more mats here. This is the DSP, the designer series paper and a piece of basic black. The black measures five and five sixteenths by four and an eighth. The DSP measures five and three sixteenths by three and 15 sixteenths. So all you have to do is flip over the designer series paper and you're gonna glue that to the basic black mat. It's just a little bit of black showing. There's not much. And I can tell when I cut this piece, I actually cut it a little bit like on here. I've got a little bit bigger margin of black on here. I cut it super close, but that's quite all right. So then flip it over and you're gonna glue your black to your card front, more or less is what that is. And that goes right here. So this designer series paper, I was having the hardest time figuring out what color to use with it. And all of a sudden I'm like, it hit me. Cherry cobbler is just absolutely gorgeous with it. Okay, so now what you're gonna do is you want to adhere this last because what's super important is your, when you cut out the stitched oval, it fits in here a certain way. Oh my gosh, I got it right on the first try. But what happens is it doesn't fit this way. So had you glued this to this, like the white piece to the black piece right away, and it wouldn't have fit. So you got a 50-50 chance of getting it right if you glue these together first. So I, I in class, I had everybody do this last. So now that you have this, what you're gonna do is take your dimensionals, and I put four of them on a piece this size. Okay. Hi, Luann. I know, these poppies are just gorgeous. I absolutely love them too. My, one of my favorite sets in this whole mini catalog, and you said of all time, I would have to agree. So just make sure you get your scalloped oval in here. It should nestle right in there perfectly. And that also, it's cool because it actually helps like keep the card closed. If it wasn't popped up and you had this black flat, it, like this wouldn't stay and catch on there. Now that you've got that, next step is to take your oval, stitched scam, oval, <laughs> stitched oval, and that's just gonna go right on to the scalloped oval. Perfect. Now I would take your Stella pen. You can definitely bedazzle up your poppies like that. And what I did for ribbon on this one, I kept it a little more simple. What you'll do is just take and you're gonna cut yourself a piece and you're just gonna knot it on the side like this. This is where the buddy system comes in handy, but I don't have a buddy here right now helping me. So I'm gonna MacGyver it myself with my own two hands. So you're just gonna tie a knot on the side. Now that that's on, you can use your ribbon scissors and tie yourself or cut yourself some nice ends for that. All right, and then lastly on this one is some of the, the sequins, or are some of the sequins. Again, watch out for all that static going on. And I put three of them on this one as well. So what we'll do is use the pick tool. And I made my card a little opposite. So what I've got going on is I'm gonna put one over here and get that ready. And I think in this case, I will put, who? where do I wanna put the other two? I'll go, ooh. I don't know, where would you put them? <laughs> oh, I guess I, I, hate, I, mean, I have a hard time with sequins. I don't know if you do too, but all right. So we're going to put one there. Um, oh, that's the hardest part about cards is the last little bit, like embellishing it. Um, we're going to put one over there. So who knows? Let's see what it looks like when you actually get them on here. <laughs> oh, tough choices today. <laughs> Hopefully that's the hardest decision I have to make all day. Okay, so... We're gonna put this guy down up here. Oh, you can't even see the red, so let's not even do red. We're gonna go for the black one and a clear one. We'll do a clear one there and the black. Oh my goodness, get on here. We'll do that there. And then I'm gonna look for a gold one. Gotta get some gold to get that girl. All right, <laughs> whatever. Um, you, when you make this card at home, you can put your sequins wherever your heart desires. So boom, okay, that is card number two done. 
from the Painted Poppies product base class I did. I'm gonna put that away, get this guy back there. Um, if you girls have any questions while you're making cards or watching this, you just let me know. All right, next card. Now this card was, we're gonna do this one next. This card wasn't the hardest, but it was, it had a lot going on with it. It pulled in, it pulled in these little, the, like the elements. They came with vellum, white watercolor, and some black. And so just, you're gonna do a little bit of coloring with that. My designer series paper is from the Poppies. Again, um, this measures, let me get my little measurements out here, my little recipe card. So how I've got it measuring is my Poppy background, this piece right here is my standard mat. It's five and a quarter by four, so that's standard. Um, the white inside piece is the same. And then what I did with my mats is I made them three and 13 sixteenths. And this one I made two, and this one I made two and a half. So two and a half high this way and two that way. And then I've just got a little strip of poppy here. It's five eighths by three and 13 sixteenths. Here I pulled in the circle piece. That is part of the painted, what are they called? Painted label dies. That's this piece right here. And pulled that in. Um, I have here from the um, leaf punch. That was part of that sunflower set. So um, I pulled in the leaf. And what else do we have here? So let's go ahead. Oh, this label. Oh, I don't have it in front of me here, but this is from the Merry Christmas dies. I have like Merry and holidays. So, so and then we've got our elements here are the vellum. So I'll set those off to the side for right now. Okay, so we've got our card base, which is your normal eight and a half by five and a half. Use your bone folder to burnish the edge. And what we'll do is, oh, here, I'll show you how I did this. That is the stamp from the set right here, the Painted Poppy. So all I did was take the black memento ink here, and you're going to stamp the outline. And then this is like abstract. People have a hard time with this. Like this does not match up exactly. It's like a watercolor washy look. So just go with it. Um, it doesn't fill in everything. And it's just a stamp that you stamp it whatever color you want over the top of the outline. So that's what is going on there. So grab your liquid glue or your tape runner and put a little glue on your inside mat. So I made this card congratulations. And I think what I'll do later on is there's a really pretty sentiment in here. So the congratulations comes from here and then it says, wishing you every happiness this special day will bring. Could definitely be a really pretty wedding card. Um, congratulations too, if I left it blank, it could be a congratulations for anything. Um, somebody got a new job, somebody moved. You know, congratulations are for a lot of different things. So I'm just gonna prep the back of my DSP for gluing this on to the poppy and the, make sure you get your stripes on the bottom. So that kind of nestles right along the bottom. And when I'm gluing this down, I'm just matching my three edges that I can see. And then I'm gonna flip this around. Make sure your flowers are going the right direction. That's very important with designer series paper that you have your flowers going the right way. Now you're wondering, I've got this red, like missing chunk right here, and it's kind of hard to see that, but that's where this piece comes in. That's gonna cover up these weird seams here. So all you wanna do is put your liquid glue along that, and that's gonna go right over the top of that. And that also is the three and 13, 16, so it goes right to the edge of the designer series paper. So that's what I like about this liquid glue. It allows you to maneuver it where you want it. Then on the sample here, you can see that I've got some white seam binding ribbon around that. So pull out your tear and tape. Here's my trick when I have uh, the ribbon around something. And this is really not even gonna be around it. This is called paper, um, not paper, ribbon saving. So you're gonna put your tear and tape on the back of the card and pick off your paper. Now, I never ever use liquid glue with ribbon. So what you'll do is grab your ribbon and you're gonna get your end of your ribbon and you're gonna attach that. So I'm gonna eyeball it from the front and tuck my tail over. Then grab your ribbon, 
bring it to the other side, let it stick to the tape, bring it back, and, oh, wrong side, haha, <laughs> you wanna bring it that way, because I'm gonna have them kind of overlapping each other, and then bring it right to the end, and then this is where you can take your scissors and cut it. So did you see what I just did? I did not waste any ribbon by wrapping it around the back of the card. I didn't waste anything right there at all. So basically I used, oop, <laughs> I used the minimal amount. You just gotta make sure that it sticks to the back. Okay, then what I do is I like to make sure my ribbon will never ever pop out of this card. I actually reinforce it with a little bit more tear and tape. So that will definitely pickle this ribbon and make sure it never pops out in six months or a year. Whoever keeps this card forever, <laughs> that should not come out. So. All right, now that I've got that done, I'll run the rest of my liquid glue. And it doesn't need to go where the tear and tape is because that's already got adhesive. Now I'm gonna flip this and just kind of eyeball with my eighth inch margin all the way around. Boom, just like that. Okay, so looking good so far. Now we have our circle, we've got leaves, we've got our congratulations, and we got these. Let's get these guys prepped. So these leaves, One's gonna go, and it's over here. One leaf is going that way, and one is going that way. So I'm gonna make sure I got these going the right way. I'm going to color these with the dark poppy and the dark mossy meadow. So what you wanna do when you're coloring on these elements, I'm gonna take this out of the plastic because you got a glare going on. Okay, let's pull up the sleeves for this. So this is the front of the element or the flower vellum. It's white on the top, and what you're gonna do is you're gonna flip this over and you're gonna color the back of this. Um, that just makes it a lot more smoother and softer looking, and I got like a fuzzy right there. Okay, so you're just gonna color the back of it. Don't worry if you go out of the lines a little bit. It's you're not, nobody's ever gonna see it, but check this out then. So that looks, let's see here, it looks, kind of like rough, but then when you flip it over, you see the white lines and it looks soft and delicate and pretty. So make sure you flip your leaves over and then you're gonna color the back of those, just like that. Now, if you want them a little bit darker, give them a second to dry and do a second wave right over the top of them and it makes them a little bit darker. That's it for that. Then what you wanna do is Grab your Stella pen, and you're going to Stella your leaves. Stella is your friend. Make sure you use her. She likes to be used. Hi, Lisa. Thanks for joining. I appreciate you watching. Look at that Stella. I just squeezed it, and she just came right out. Oh, my goodness. Okay. You know what you can also do is you can Stella the front of your flowers and make them really pretty, just like that. Okay. So we got that done. Oh man, don't forget this guy right here. You gotta Stella this up. Get it full of glitter. All right, so once you got that, now you don't have to do all of it. You can see I'm just doing the outer edge. Don't waste your Stella on areas that people can't see. So I'm just going around the perimeter of this. So, okay, so what I'm gonna do is flip that over and put some dimensionals on here like so. I'm just using four of them. I'm gonna use this last one, just right in the middle. Okay, perfect. Hi, Bonnie, thanks for joining. Bonnie sent me a picture of herself in a really fast, flashy wig the other night. She was having fun. She looks super cute. Thanks for joining. Okay, flip this over. Bonnie made these cards too, so <laughs> you can add any comments you want, Bonnie, while we're working on them, if you have any insight. So now you're just gonna plop your circle down here. It's kind of a, a, a true circle, but like just get it the way you want it. I, uh, I just noticed I'm holding it the same way that I have it over there. So I'm gonna plop that down here. And then the other thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna add dimensionals behind um, my sentiment here. So I'm just gonna put like four of them, which seems like a lot, but it's okay. Put those four just along the middle is what I recommend doing for this. And you'll see why when we start adding in the foliage and the flowers. So 
pull off your little backs and you're gonna put this. I've got it south of the equator. <laughs> I say that a lot in class. When I mean the equator, I mean in the middle. So like it's just south of the middle of the red circle. So we're gonna put that right about here. Okay, doing good. Then what I've got going on is I got my flower, I've got two leaves and the other leaves. So you girls have to see something though. I have to find, oh, give me one second. One second. I'm gonna get my black Sharpie marker because this is a trick that I learned with these poppies. So right now, this poppy is not like anything special. It's pretty. Hang on, I'm gonna make my way back in here. It's not anything crazy, but all you need is a black Sharpie. And you're gonna take that black Sharpie and you're gonna color in the center of this element here. And like, look at the difference that makes. So you can see in the card I have done, it just makes it pop. So grab, don't be afraid to grab out a black Sharpie. Um, your blends work too. If you have a black blend, that is awesome as well. So make sure you do that. So that's my trick with the Sharpie. What I've done then is I'm gonna take, oh, I'm gonna straighten this out because I want it to be straight. There you go. So how I did this is I'm just gonna put a little dollop of liquid glue right on the bottom of my poppy here. Now, if you put glue elsewhere, you'll probably see it come through. So I'm only putting a little bit on the bottom and what I'm doing is I'm tucking it underneath my banner. So like, or my sentiment here. Yeah, they they were pretty cards. I'm just checking my Facebook messages while I'm giving this a second to dry. Yeah, yep, 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 the cards were easy. Thanks, Bonnie. Okay, so this looks awesome because it gives it some like texture, like the flowers kind of popping off the page. Then what I did is I took this little leaf and I'm gonna tuck that back there too. And all I'm gonna do to do that is add a little bit of liquid glue to the back side of that one as well. So I just put a teeny drop and that's gonna get tucked right behind. So you're not gonna see it, you're not gonna see the glue at all. Then how we do this other side though is we wanna layer from the bottom up. So we're gonna take one of these leaves and I'm gonna use a dimensional behind the middle leaf. And I'm not gonna even use liquid glue on this. So all I'm gonna do is tuck that behind here and it's gonna stick because of the dimensional. And then I'm gonna take another dimensional and put that behind the middle of that leaf. And then I'm gonna tuck that one in and because we only put the glue with the rose or the poppy here, it's not gonna contend with trying to stick this in there, the leaf in there. Okay, lastly then is this other leaf and that one I'm gonna use a little bit of liquid glue on the back side, just on the stem and that's gonna help everything kind of like stick in place here. So you wanna just be careful not to get glue all over the place as you're tucking this guy in here. Tuck them in and put them to bed, right? There we go, boom, I love it. Okay, so there we go. How do you like that? That's how I put this card together. And I noticed that my little dimensional on this side is giving me problems, so we're gonna replace him with a different one, just like that. Okay, cool beans. So there we go. What are we missing? We are missing a bow here and we're missing sequins. So this is where you're gonna grab, ooh, you know what, I think I have my bow made already for this one. Oh, maybe I don't. I thought I did, but we'll make another one. So on this one, I made a little bit bigger of a bow. So grab the bow maker if you have one and go ahead and wrap that around twice. Hey, Melissa, thanks for joining tonight. Yes, I know you tried to order the set and it was on back order, so it should be soon. Soon as it is, I will let you know. Okay, get your bow maker out of the way and what you'll do is grab your dimension or your glue dots. Grab one of those off of there. It's gonna go right in the corner like so and put your bow, let's see if we have a front to it. Not really. So put your bow right there. Trim your tails. Now, however you make like your tails, that's up to you. Some people like a little bit longer. Some people like them shorter. It's your preference. So, but it's always nice to make them at a slant. All right, now we're gonna put a few sequins on here. So 
I'm gonna take my paper pumpkin sequins, and this time I had no problem <laughs> figuring out where I wanted these sequins, so I liked them here. There's gonna be one right there, and then you can see with the, the pokey tool how easy those pop off. Now again, when you open up your sequins, be very careful. Find the colors that you want. In this case, I want this red one here. I want a clear one. Bonnie hates the clear ones, but I'm gonna put a clear one on anyways because <laughs> I like it just adds a little bit of crystally to it. Uh, what color should I do here? I'm thinking there is this peachy color and it's right there. So let's get that one on there. All right. And I had an extra one, like one right there. So boom, there we go. All right, third card is done. Wonderful, wonderful. Okay, so far we're cruising, we're doing good. We got one more card to put together and then we're gonna go ahead and make a box or a gift bag. So let's get this guy out of the way. Hey Jay, thanks for joining. <laughs> All right, that one's done. Let's set that off to the side. And last but not least, We've got this card, and this was also a little bit of a fun fold. Let me pull this out for you. Let's get this put away. <clears throat> Excuse me, all right. So this is a bit of a fun fold. It's got like an arm to it. So this opens this way, and then that opens like that, and then we have our inside. So very, very pretty. I'm just gonna take a sip of water. They said with the coronavirus all going around, they said, you're supposed to drink water every 15 minutes. <laughs> so yesterday, <clears throat> I went the whole hour and a half without drinking any water. So, all right, so let's work on this. So we have our painted poppy, or it's um, poppy parade base, eight and a half by five and a half. Just fold that over and you're gonna score it and burnish it, or score it and then just burnish it. So that's the base. All right, our inside. So I made this one a happy birthday again, but on my sample right here, I made it a sympathy card. So my goal with these four cards was to use four different sentiments from here to show you the versatility of this set. Very, very cool. So I have here, I made this one a birthday card though. So I've got happy birthday, wishing you happiness this special day will bring. I wanted to show you some coloring. So. I have here the light and the dark poppy markers. So what I like to do is I like to use the dark first and then I like to use the light. And what I try to do is the dark more in the center of what I'm doing and then I follow up with the light everywhere else, including right over the top of the dark color. So this lighter painted poppy looks like it's more pinky but it, it turns out super cool as you add more layers to it. So as you go over the dark color is how you get to see the lines disappear. And I'm not sure if you're seeing this live on the camera, if you can zoom in, but as you color, so right now you can still kind of see a circle. Let's see once where this petal ends, I think right there. This is a brand new marker. I opened it up. I can't remember if it was yesterday or the day before or today, but now go back over and do another layer and it's gonna darken the flower up. Go make sure you go over the line really good. The more you go over the line where the dark stops, it's just gonna disappear. So watch this, I'm gonna go over one more time. And it's darker in the center and it's lighter around the edges. So, and you can tell that, look at the back. The trick that I've heard is the more that you see on the back, the more that you've done with blending and colored it in. So that's cool. Now I've got the leaves. What you can do with leaves, like I like to do a darker color where the veins are. And so I like to use the thinner end for that. So I'm gonna come over here and do my thinner. And then I'm gonna pull in the lighter color over the entire thing. So I'm gonna do, I actually used a, I think I used a light mossy for the veins and I'm doing a light old olive for the rest of it. And they're not exactly the same greens, but they're definitely going to do the trick. So now this is another one where you see the veins, then just go over in a circular motion and you'll get rid of 
the like the streaky line look. So I just wanted to show you that coloring. It turns out really cool. Okay, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put my liquid glue along the back side of that. As long as I got my glue out, I am going to get my designer series paper prepped. I'll give you the measurements for this in just a second. So let me get this over there and this here. So open up your card. Let's put that inside here. All right. What's Lisa say? If not that she hates them, she can't see them. Oh, <laughs> Lisa said, Bonnie doesn't hate the clear sequins. It's just that she doesn't like, um, she just can't see them. So yes, that is very true. And so for me, I can't really see them either. It's just that the way that I hold the card, they look listening to me. So, okay, good point. All right, so this now, I was gonna tell you some measurements. Let's see where I have this card right here. Okay, so my black piece is four and a quarter by three. The DSP is four by two and three quarters. And then there's this black arm here. I'll tell you the measurement for that. I've got it at seven and a quarter by one and three eighths. And I scored it at four and three eighths. So I'll tell you why I scored it like that in a little second here, a little bit. So I'm gonna just take my liquid glue and I'm gonna glue down the black onto the front of the card. I'm just gonna center that as best I can. Okay, then the reason that I scored this at four and three eighths instead of four and a quarter is because if I would have done it at four and a quarter, so there's a score line here. If I would have done it at four and a quarter, it would have ended up with this little bit of red showing back here and I didn't want that. So I figured I would, I cut everybody's paper a hair longer with the thought that everybody can just take their scissors and trim it. So what you'll do is you're gonna glue the arm onto the back of your card. So let's get this like this. And what I wanna do is center this. So once I have that centered in the front, I'm gonna flip the back down so that I'm confident that that's pretty centered back there. This is where you'll take your scissors then. That's my glue scissors. That doesn't want to open up. <laughs> my mom cut a bunch of glue dots or tear tape for me the other day and it got goopy. I need to take some goo onto it. So all I'm doing is taking my paper scissors and I am trimming off that little schnibble right there and I'll throw that away. So that gave me the ability then for my black to come straight flush with the edge of the card. Isn't that cool? Okay, next what I have is the arm. It's gonna have the circle and that's glued down to it. Again, if you got your kit from me and you've got little bits that need to get popped out, just take your pokey tool and poke them out. All I'm doing is putting a little bit of glue right in the center of the front of the arm and I'm centering my circle um, top to bottom and left to right. So once I've got that, pretty much where I want it. I'm just gonna press that down so the glue sticks. Then this white circle has got some stitching. So everybody got a kit from me, you got a little stitch circle, and I'm gonna use my dimensionals to pop that up. And look at that, oh, I got one more right in the corner. Because now what I've got left on my sheet is all the edges, and then I'll take my scissors, and my glue scissors, and I'll just cut them all to size. Okay, pick off your dimensional backings. Hi, Tammy. The clear one is a mysterious embellishment. <laughs> it sure is. <laughs> Definitely agree. Okay, pull this back on here, and you're just going to center that in your circle. And now you're going to pull your girl's best friend out. And I waited to do this after so that, you you know, you don't have to Stella the whole thing. You're just going to Stella the edge of it so that it's the part that you see. Don't go wasting your Stella behind the white circle. So you're just gonna add a little bit of bedazzling to your card here. All right, perfect. Just like that. I'm making Bonnie proud right now, I know that. Okay, got the Stella out. All right, so far so good. Now what we've got left on this card is 
a little bit of bling with the sequins. So again, I'm gonna grab out my glue dots that are from the paper pumpkin. It's a good way to use these up. So that one there, and then I'm gonna put one right there with the pokey tool, then just pick them up. Let's get that out of the way. Remember, for those that just joined me, I'm giving away something for liking and sharing. Thanks to Diane Bogenhagen. She donated this little ladybug stamp set. She wants to find a good home for it. So she's going to help me select the winner. So like, share, and comment on this Facebook Live, and you'll be entered into that drawing. And that will be exciting. Okay, let's see what I used here. I'm going to use this reddish one. So I want to make sure that it's facing that way. We're going to use a gold one. So I'm not a big fan. Oh, oh did you see that sneaker? He snuck. Oh, I was stuck behind the gold one. I, I was just going to say, I am not a fan of the flower ones. These flower ones are kind of like, um, they're very bulky to me. So I try to stay away from them. But did you see how that snuck? See, this one's going to sneak, that clear one for Bonnie's going to sneak in there for me. Nope, I don't want it. Go away. All right, I want black. Okay, there we go. So shut up your sequins. Get them out of your way. Boom. And we're going to do one last little bow. I think by now people are sick of me making bows in front of them, right? So <laughs> let's just do one more real quick. And so I can say I'm done with the car. Hi, Angie. Yes, those glue dots. I have found a purpose for them. Bonnie always donates them to me, and they make it into the community glue dots. And I love them for sequins. Otherwise, I really don't use them. But, I mean, I hate wasting them, so I'll use them if I can. All right, get that. But for the bows here, though, I like to use the really good glue dots here for my bows. So let's grab one of those off of here. And I'm going to set this right on the side there. And let's stick my bow on the side and pull my little tail that way. This seam binding ribbon is awesome. So right now it's not available. Uh, they ran out of inventory. There is more coming. I believe, oops, I'm gonna leave that. Ha, 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 don't look at that. Pretend you didn't see that happen. That's what happens if you pull on it, okay? <laughs> don't do that. So um, the seam binding ribbon is of, gonna be available again at another time. It's just not right now. So um, it's one of those that they turned off the code so we can't even order it. It won't even go on back order. So just know it's not forever. Um, it's the ribbon that you can stamp on and you can color it. So super cool. All right, yay! Applause, I got four cards done for you here in less than an hour. I had a lot of the prep work done, but that's okay. So I wanted to show you how to make all those. So let's get, this one goes in here and get this out of the way now for the awesome part. We're making a box, so not a box. I keep calling it a box. When I say box, just know I mean bag. I think that I, by now you mean, you know I mean bag and I always confuse words like butterflies and bees, so all right. Let's get this out of the way. And I'm gonna show you the box bag we're gonna make. So the, the, the awesome Sarah Simon made this for me and there was a card in it. And she actually made this card and I cased her card for the class. So she gave me that card and she gave me this bag and there were chocolates in here and a gift card. And she gave it to me for all the hard work I did for the occasion jamboree. And I thought that was super, super sweet. So she even made her own ready shreddy. This is basically pool party and poppy parade ribbon. And she cut it into thin little strips. I don't know if she has a special scissors for it, but some of them are thicker and some of them are thinner. So that is super cool. So it's like it matched. It was just adorable when she gave it to me. So what I have here is we're going, I kind of like dissected this bag and we're going to put it together and I'm gonna give you some measurements. I'm gonna clear a little room here because we are gonna be bringing out the scoreboard. You girls wonder how I score all of my um, card bases for you. This is what I use. Let me just, I feel like I need some space. So let me move stuff aside here. Okay, so I'm gonna set the bag over here so we can kinda see it yet. So we're gonna put it right there. Okay, so if you're following along with me, 
in the catalog. You're not, I know, but what you could do is open up your catalog and you may not have even seen this, but it's page 189 and there's a Simply Scored scoring tool. This is the, what I use to score all of your card bases. This is where you'll find your take your pick tool, your bone folder, your paper snips. This is the page for your tools. So, so that's where I'm pulling this from in case you don't have this yet. So I'm gonna pull the board in without knocking anything down. All right, here it is. It's like big. So let me, I'm gonna even try to like zoom out. See, I just zoomed out a little bit. You can see more space, but this is pretty much how big the board is. Um, there's markers at the top for you to, to like, like let's say you're constantly scoring at certain measurements. That's where you can put these little pegs. They come out and they go back in. Um, there's a little holder up here to hold more of them. So I've got a little stockpile because like one time I took three of them to Kelly's team meeting and didn't want to lose them. So I put them all in my pants pocket and then I forgot they were in my pants pocket and I found all of them in the dryer later, luckily. But um, I have extra in case I lose them. And then down here at the bottom, there's a little spot for the stylus. The stylus has a big ball on one end and then the little end is here. So this is an awesome tool for scoring different things, um, especially card bases. Like if you're making any type of fun fold, like this thing will really help you with it. So I've got a hot little mess of paper going on here. So let me tell you, when I dissected this, I have two sheets of paper here. The two sheets of paper are almost the same. They're not a square, but they're close. So I've got seven and a half and I've got seven. Okay, so it's a piece, two pieces and they are seven and a half by seven. And what I've got here are my notes um, on the seven and I'm gonna do this but I'm just telling you what I'm doing. So on the seven and a half side, I'm gonna score at a half an inch and five inches. And then on, on the seven inch side, I'm gonna score it at five. My two pieces of designer series paper are four and a quarter by four and three quarters. So that's basically this side and this side. Okay, so I've got those just cut here for that. But those are my measurements. So what I'm gonna do here is I'm going to take one piece and I'm gonna hold it up here, and I think you can see my measurements. Okay, I'll get this ribbon out of the way. It's like all over me there. Okay, so I've got it. You can see here it's seven and a half, and this is where these little markers come in good. So you want to score it at a half an inch or five inches. So, and five inches, not or, so both. So here's a half an inch, and here's five inches. Now, um, I'm not so good at scoring at this half inch mark, I have a hard time like reaching that way. So what I find myself doing is when something needs a half inch, I know that this is seven and a half. So I go backwards a half inch. And so work with me here. This is a half an inch. So then I'm going to flip this over and okay, I just scored it at a half an inch. It's just my angle. I'm If I was left-handed, that might be easier, but I'm a righty. So I go from that way. So then it says seven and a half, score at a half an inch and five inches. So here's our five inch mark. So I'm gonna go straight down with that, boom. Now it says on the seven inch side, so you're gonna rotate your paper and you're gonna put it at seven inches. Can you buy the extra pointers? You know what, Lisa? I'm pretty sure that you can't now anymore because they used to be an add-on item, but it comes with, I believe, three of them. Mark, mark your scoring lines. I'm pretty sure it comes with three of them. So they, I got my extra markers uh, law maybe like three or four years ago when they were still available. So good question though. Okay, so now at our seven inch, so we got seven inches, you're gonna score it at five. So back at five. Now you're gonna do that with your second piece. So let's make sure we got this right. So we've got seven and a half. I'm gonna score it at a half an inch. You know me, I'm going to go do backwards. So now I've, I've just scored it at a half an inch and now five inches. And then bring your paper like this and you've got it at the seven inch mark. You're going to score it at five. So we've got five. All right. So now we've got the scoring done. So I'm going to get my scoring board out of the way. That's all we needed to use the scoreboard for. Great investment. I've had mine 
for at least five years. And I'll tell you, I use it with almost every single class because I score every card for you girls. Okay, so now we've got, these are our basically our panels that are gonna make our box go together. So what I generally do is I will fold my score, fold my on my score lines and burnish them. That one is good. And then this one like so. Okay, so that's ready to go. Now you gotta make sure you score these the right way. So like this one goes this way. So this one is gonna go this way. So if you end up score like if you end up scoring them both the same way, they won't fit together. So it's like you almost gotta score your like fold your pieces backwards. And I'm not sure if that makes sense, but you'll get it as soon as I show you this. So the reason is because how this will go like that and this will go like that. Had you scored both of the, I'm going to just do it the opposite way. If you would have scored it the wrong way, like your pieces don't go together. So good. So <clears throat> you want to make sure that you score them and fold them. Well, score them is one thing, but folding them. So you fold them so they make the box like that. Okay. So now you've got your pieces. They're scored. They're burnished. And now it's cutting the bottoms. So what I've done here is... You're gonna take your paper scissors and not your ribbon scissors. So let's get the right scissors here. Okay, so if you look at this box here that's already put together, there's a, let's see if you can see it. There it is. There's a seam right here. So that's this one coming this way. This one is tucked underneath and the panels that come this way are inside. So what we're doing, whew, I got stuff all over from doing that. Okay, so this main panel right here is the important one that you want your edges straight on that one. And then on the ones that are going to get tucked on the inside, what I generally do on those is I cut them at a diagonal like so. All right. So then pull that little triangle piece. Like, oh, I got dominoes over there. So, so I've kind of got this one straight and this one at a diagonal. On this one, I'm going to cut it straight and you actually don't even need this little tab right here. So you're just gonna snip him off and don't look back. Okay, you wanna do the exact same thing on this side. This little guy, it's gonna go away and you want this, I'm cutting it right on the inside of the score fold. So there's that. Same thing here, I'm cutting it right, right on the inside of the score, like that. This guy, I'm gonna do at my diagonal, so I'm going, further away so you can kind of see here um, I've got more and then it kind of gets skinnier like that all right so let me just do a little bit more okay all right let's see you guys asking is the bag is amazing way to go Sarah yes yeah, Sarah Simon is a fabulous stamper oh my goodness like I take notes from her okay so now we've got this let me just kind of show you how this is going to piece together like this so now we've got our inside this is really kind of hard to do to hold so let's okay just pretend this is going together really smoothly all right there so <laughs> it's like tv magic right okay so now you've got this is kind of like how it's going to go together okay boom there so what we're going to have to do is use some tear and tape so now that we got it this far we're gonna look at the bottom, see our bottom goes like that, and that all fits together nicely. So what I'm gonna do is set this off to the side and I'm gonna pull in here this one. I've got it prepped with tear and tape on, so like on this short side, I've got the tear and tape closer to the fold here and less away from that seam. You want it being sticky right next to the score line. And so I've prepped these two pieces with my tear and tape along the edge. On one of them, I've prepped my tear and tape on this back side. And on the other one, I've prepped my tear and tape basically on the inside. And I've done it that way because what's going to happen is this one is going to, let's see how I've got this. 
This one's going to layer, I don't know if you're gonna see this from my video here, but I'm trying to put this together so you can see it. So like this one's holding the tear and tape, these panels down, and actually, I lied, these are gonna go in here. So this tear and tape's gonna seam to it here, and then this one's gonna seam to it there. Then what I'm gonna do is, because the bag is kind of big, I'm gonna take my two inner flaps and I'm gonna put a little bit of liquid glue on them and then just push them down. Okay, so I hope that makes sense. Well, just watch me do it. And then maybe you guys can practice at home and let me know how I could do this any simpler. <laughs> so, so I'm gonna take this off here and I'm gonna, I um, hope my head doesn't get in the way. Oh my goodness, I just like realized I went all the way down. So hang on, so let's see here. You know, I got one eye bad and one eye good, so I gotta get in here good to see it. Okay, so I lined that up. Okay, so far success. There we go. Now, what's gonna happen is I'm gonna want, look at this. Do you know like when we do these cool fun folds in class, like it's just sometimes you think, oh, I have to do this like, like this, no. Think sometimes it's easier to MacGyver things flat. So like I'm taking this tape off. Now watch this. As long as I have this straight, this should just flip right over and meet the seam. And it's like, yay, it did. Okay, so now I've got my two inner panels. The, they're gonna go in first. This is gonna go next. And this is gonna go next, right? And it should all go together like awesome. So what I'm gonna do so that I don't have to do the glue from the inside, I'm gonna put a little bit of liquid glue here already, just so that it's there and um, like that. Then what I'm gonna do is take off my tear and tape here and I'm gonna take my tear and tape off here. And what's gonna happen is this one goes down first. I'm squeezing the box and making sure it's straight while I do this, okay? So now I've done that. Then what I'm gonna do is take my scissors and that liquid glue is, I'm just gonna press those inner panels down so that they're nice and snug on there. So had I not done that liquid glue at that point, like I would be trying to come in here, lift them up, squeeze my glue in here, and then push them down. And that just seemed like, wow, that was a lot of work. So, okay, cool, we've got our gift bag so far. Now, if I was like a little bit on my A game here, I would have probably glued my pieces of DSP, well, I had um, it flat like that, but I wasn't thinking like that. I mean, I was happy enough that I got the box or the bag put together. So let's just put our glue on our panels of DSP. Again, they're four and a quarter by four and three quarters. And I'm just going to position my DSP on to the panel like that. Again, because I'm using that liquid glue, I can wiggle it around a little bit and get that going. All right, so far so good. All right, now I'm gonna make sure that's dry. And then I'll flip that over and put this one on. Uh, think of the endless possibilities. You girls have all this designer series paper at home. Um, Soledad, you said you have cardstock at home. Like, get your cardstock out and and just start making stuff with it. Like you don't have to have it exactly like this and you can make bigger bags, you can make smaller bags, but look at that. Okay, see, you can do it after the fact. So now what happens is we are going to put a little hole punch in the side of the bag here and we're going to go, so this is a hole punch. <laughs> I didn't know if there was gonna be, I had a fancy name for it or not, but all right, I didn't. So I'm just gonna punch a hole right there on both sides, oh man. You know what, my, I would say that when you glue paper onto the edge of a bag like this, you may want to do it a little bit closer to the end of the paper, just so that it doesn't wanna like curl off. Do you see what happened there? I didn't have it close enough. So if you do a little bit closer to the edge, it will like just say more secure. All right, then pull in the punch for this side and punch it, boom, okay? Now, I have my crazy ribbon. So this is the organdy ribbon or organza ribbon. Let's look real quick. I had it picked out on the page here. So this is called the glittered organdy ribbon. It's 850, it's black, so it's right there. It's page 175 of the annual catalog. 
and it's sparkly. So you can see a little bit of sparkle in there. So I had this scrap, it must've been on a bag or something that I won. So what I'm gonna do is fold this into a little piece and I'm gonna try to get that right through there. Exactly, so. And then I'm gonna pull it and I'm gonna make a knot on the one side so that it won't pull through. So, all right, like that. And I'm gonna trim my end just a little bit shorter without cutting my finger there. Now pull that like that, okay, perfect. So my hole was small enough that that doesn't go through. So now what you're gonna do is make your handle. And so I'm gonna measure like this bag's handle was it about like that size, which was a nice length. I'm not even gonna measure this. I'm just gonna wing it and eyeball it as well. So this will come up like this and I'm gonna like go something like that. So what I'm gonna do is cut it right about like that. Save that one for the other one. And you're gonna make sure that you poke the ribbon through the outside of the box, going to the inside, like so. Now this is where it's important. This is where you wanna make sure you tie your knot. So I've got about like that much ribbon and I'm gonna tie my knot, I'm gonna pull that and then I kind of pegged where I wanted my knot to go in this ribbon. So it's gonna go right, before I tighten it, I'm just going to make sure I, yep, that looks good to me. So now I'm gonna go back and tighten this and trim it a little bit shorter. Boom, okay. All right, <laughs> yay, I haven't made a gift bag in like ever. So i um, very proud of myself right now. I hope you girls like it. So I would love for you to make some gift bags at home and send me pictures or put them on the Cards by Christine website. I wanna see what you make. So, okay, I'm gonna flip this back at me. So, wow, I got shiny again. So this this working up a sweat stamp in here, like it gets me going. So um, I hope you enjoyed that. I do have a couple things I wanna show you as well. So I just wanted to put it back on me to make sure you know I'm still here. <laughs> so, all right, let's flip this back down. Um, I wanna show you what, what have a project that I'm going to do coming up in a couple weeks. So this is the all-inclusive three cheers for you card kit. And I have a pick your kit class. It is slated for, oh man, um, not this Monday, March 30th, but the following like April something. I don't know if somebody wants to look at a calendar and tell me, but um, it's the first Monday in April. And what, what I'm going to do instead of doing the, I can't have the class in person. So what I was going to do that night was put this kit together with you live. And for anybody out there that wants a kit, you can still get your kits for me. Because look at this. I've got one. I've got two. I've got three, four, five kits sitting here that I was going to use for my team meeting, which is postponed. So I've got time to order more for that. But I have five of these kits that are here. So if you're local and if, if you're local and you want to put this kit together with me, reach out to me and we can figure out like if you want to pick it up or if you want me to mail it to you, but I'd love for you to make a kit with me on that Monday night. So um, this kit, let me flip it back down here. So the kit is awesome. So like Soledad, if you and Isabel are looking for something fun to do, like this is all inclusive kit. It comes with the stamps, it comes with the twine, it comes with little sequins that are actually adhesive backed, so you don't have to worry about putting adhesive. It comes with the dimensionals, a block, and then your whole kit is here, like, and you are, we're just gonna stamp and put it together. So, so that's a really cool kit. So it's called the Take um, uh, Three Cheers to You All Inclusive Kit. So that is a class that's coming up. Oh man, I just like knocked me silly here. So, okay, perfect, got it back. Okay, then the other thing too that's coming up next week, Monday. So if you're enjoying the live classes, I have this class live and I've showed this a couple times, but I'm taking RSVPs for this class. If you want the card kits, I will definitely put the card kits together for you, either not completed or completed so you'd get the pieces or you could get finished cards and this is going to be my last class it's called celebration hoorah rah it's the last class of the month and last class during celebration um it's 15 dollars or free with a 25 dollar order if you want kits 
Otherwise, if you just want to come along on Monday night and watch me, um, it's a free class for you to watch. Uh, so with that said, though, it's the end of celebration. So again, there is this, um, the Honey Bee Sampler is what we're calling this. And if you haven't earned your spot at my one of my free events, you still have time to do that. It was either $150 in orders um, in the January, February, March time period, or you could um, be on my team and um, add three new team members. So, so that's coming up. And those dates, um, I have those dates as April 2nd, April 4th, and April 8th. And there's no way that I'm going to be able to have those in person on those dates with what's going on. I am going to be rescheduling them for May. So watch, um, stay tuned for those dates. And um, I've decided for the monthly class for March and also the Mountain Air class, we're going to be doing online classes as well. So stay tuned for more details on that. Don't forget, if you haven't liked or shared the video, the Facebook Live, we're going to be doing this drawing tomorrow with Diane. Um, any orders, I appreciate them. If you need anything, uh, it's still $50 for getting a free celebration item. There's plenty of things available and I still have my my celebration board. I am halfway filled up with my next board and so I will be doing a drawing for that probably live on the first. So, wow, I think that we did it. An hour and 15 minutes wasn't so bad. We made four cards, we made a gift bag and we did a little bit of chitter chatting. So, um, whew, I think I'll take a deep breath and get myself a beer. I think I earned it. <laughs> Are you girls ready to have a drink with me? <laughs> so it's been a long week. All right, so tune in tomorrow. Around 5 p.m., I am going to be doing another Facebook Live. Hmm, I should take suggestions on what to do. If I don't get any suggestions, I have some ideas. Bonnie, I hope you're not mad at me, but you have a fat bottom bag that I think I want to dissect and do a Facebook Live on how to put that fat bottom, I think you call it a fat bottom bag. So I think Sold Out and Isabella love that kind of stuff and they're the ones that want me to do, <laughs> to do lives so that they don't have to be going stir crazy. I'm gonna try to give them something to work on. So I think I'll do that tomorrow. And then I think they take the weekend off and then we'll be back on Monday for the live celebration Hoorah Rock class. So, all right, everybody, thanks for tuning in. I really love you. I can't wait to see you in person. <laughs> so um, we're gonna make it through it though. Love you. Bye, everybody.